烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. Well, I wasn't going to make a video today, <laughs> but then I checked my messages, and I found the most wonderful message. <laughs> Something that actually I've been waiting for for a long, long time. So I want to read it to you. I'm not going to reveal the name、uh, or the location of the person, but. If he wants to, he can comment on this video. <laughs> Greetings. I would like to share some of my experiences. When I was young, I sometimes tried to relax as deeply as possible, and there always was this feeling of falling. A short panic was stopping me to completely let go, and I found this very interesting. Last year. A deep feeling of panic came from time to time, and I remembered this to be the same panic. I thought, "Well, this must be the Kundalini Shakti trying to get me to overcome the panic." Exactly, he got it exactly right. <laughs> When I was staying at the Rajneesh Puram in Oregon, I started having this type of experience. Because I had nothing to do there except meditate, somehow or other, <laughs> they didn't put me to work. So I would take long walks in the desert, and like that. This was in 1984. So after things got too crazy there, I left. I went back to my apartment in Portland, and I just sat. I just sat. I didn't try to do anything. I was sort of following the golden flower. Method, but not strictly. Mostly, I just sat and did nothing, and waited to see what would happen. And very interestingly, what happened is, I went through the whole Kundalini Yoga process without any effort at all. It just happened. And then <laughs> he goes on. So I decided to do meditations on the void, and one day I sat under a tree and was able to let go completely. I let myself fall and stayed calm. An overwhelming white light, love, came up and filled my eyes with tears. I opened my eyes, and everything I saw had a white shine to it. Then the feeling of deep love disappeared, and everything became empty. For some non-existent time, maybe a few days, I was nothing in an empty world. Something in me was searching for love, and found the most beautiful golden light within, so vibrant, loving, warm, and full of life. It felt like home. I had this exact same experience. The light, the light—it's indescribable, huh? It's dazzling, like suns, many suns, and it's also cooling, like many moons. Really hard to describe. And even though it's so dazzling and brilliant, it's clear. You can see right through it. It's transparent. Very hard to describe. And this is accompanied by a feeling of tremendous love and bliss. <laughs> So, this happened to me in December, nineteen eighty-four. December twenty-first, actually, winter solstice, nineteen eighty-four. And he talks about the next few days being an emptiness in an empty world. Well, I was invisible. People didn't perceive me or couldn't perceive me. I could walk around, go anywhere, do anything. Nobody spoke to me. Nobody interacted with me. At all, I was invisible. 
I was beyond their perception. Oh, plants and animals could see me. But hum I didn't show up on human radar at all. It was really weird. <laughs> and this lasted for weeks. So this is called stream entry or first path realization in the Buddha's teaching. But what it means is that, yes, Kundalini Shakti has decided to reveal herself and she has put you on the path to ultimate enlightenment and liberation. So this is the thing we're all searching for. This is the thing that will make us feel complete. Uh, we're looking outside in the world through the senses and none of that is making us feel as complete as this kind of experience when we go deep inside, let go of everything, relax completely, including the mind, and just, well, in my case, I was doing the golden flower technique. So I was meditating on consciousness. I was being conscious of consciousness, as if looking in a mirror and reversing the flow of consciousness from outwards to inwards. And so I was seeing all kinds of amazing things within, indescribable, completely <laughs> otherworldly, uh, and watching the Kundalini gradually rise through the chakras until she reached the top. Oh, and the way it happened was very funny. <laughs> I was meditating like 18 hours a day. So one day I took lunch, just some noodles, a you know, very simple lunch. And afterwards, I felt a presence in the room, a female presence. I mean, by this time, I was so sensitive. I was living in an apartment building, and I knew when the people would come and go. Even if they were on the other side of the building, I could, I could feel them, feel their energy. So I could feel this feminine energy in the room, but I couldn't see anything. There wasn't anybody there. I was scratching my head going, look, checking the doors and windows. <laughs> yeah, they're locked. <laughs> and suddenly I felt a tap on my forehead. And this is the real Shakti pot. <laughs> Shakti herself does it. <laughs> and then I saw the light, exactly as he describes here. And then he says, this is Eden, I thought. After this, the ego came back very strongly. I've experienced tremendous suffering and knew that it was the aspects behind the ego showing up, karma from past lives and so on. I tried not to identify them, but didn't call them off as illusion either. Instead, I identified with love and gave these aspects all the love they needed. It took a while, but one day the crying switched into hysterical laughter and bliss all of a sudden, and I experienced a huge orgasmic ecstatic explosion in the heart. <laughs> this is right. This is right. After this is first path experience, what often happens is a, the ego will come back, the mind will come back very strong, and it will say, Okay, now you're an enlightened master. Now you can do whatever you want. Your karma is finished. Huh? This is the little devil sitting on the left shoulder talking in your ear. You're perfect now. You're complete. You don't need to do any more sadhana. You know, this is the, the Jedi mind trick, right? <laughs> you don't need to meditate anymore or work on yourself. It's all right. Now you can go and enjoy the whole world. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is only first path, okay? Let's bring you down to earth. Get your feet on the ground. Sober up. <laughs> this is only first path. There are four paths. So you still have three of them left to go. Now, there are a lot of stories, and I'll tell one that I know because I was there. Osho Rajneesh, when he was 21 years old, he had this same experience. He was lying in his bed doing nothing for so many days. 
And then one day he felt like this overwhelming power. Uh, this is Shakti coming. He had to go outside. It was night. He went and sat under a tree. And then like the whole universe opened up to him and was revealed to him and, and so on. So it was just like these experiences that this fellow describes and what happened to me. You see, Brahman in everything and everything in Brahman simultaneously. It's really cool. <laughs> and you have this feeling of, this is it. I made it. And, and it's true. This is it. But it's only first path. So what happens is the latent ego, which has been suppressed by whatever meditation technique you're doing, comes back really strong and overwhelms you. And so what happened with poor Osho is that he thought, that's it, I'm a master. I can go and do whatever I want. And so he spent the next 10 years on a train, on going back and forth all over India, collecting disciples. And of course, you know the rest of the story. It ended tragically because he wasn't fully realized. He pulled the trigger too soon. He went for world domination before he was ready. So what's significant about this is that this experience is real. This is the Kundalini Shakti. This is the world mother revealing herself in her Vimarsha form, her subtle form of pure consciousness, light. Huh? The, the uh, Prakasha is called the light and the Vimarsha is called the reflection or Maya. Huh? There's consciousness and there's the object of consciousness and she is both. So this Brahman without qualities, Nirguna Brahman, this is the fundamental universal awareness that is within everything and exists everywhere. It penetrates all. Uh, so this experience is the real thing. But you have to be aware there are still ego, there are still desires, there are still uh, wrong impressions. They're, they will come up and you have to defeat them one by one until you reach the fourth path. Uh, and that's our hardship. That's the full enlightenment. And even after that, there are still issues, post-enlightenment issues. And we have a whole series on that, on this channel. So if you want to attain self-realization, you have to go through this experience of first path. But stay sober, stay grounded, huh? stay real. Don't go tripping out thinking you're the, you know, the next uh, world teacher or the Jesus Christ or something like that. <laughs> it always ends badly. <laughs> I'm sorry. So he goes on. More and more aspects are integrating in the heart, and I feel so much more complete, connected, alive, blissful, and all the colors around me are getting so vibrant juicy and alive. Inside and outside, everything is golden now, permanently. One morning I woke up and clearly heard the word union. I never had a voice speaking to me. I have the feeling that this is a divine unification. I feel so blessed. That's the short version of my last year. <laughs> Well, I'd like to hear the long version. It must be interesting. <laughs> so well, this is very significant for me because it's the first time I've encountered someone, you know, uh, who has a similar experience and who didn't freak out or didn't trip out or, you know, didn't lose their humility and who kept on going and purifying themselves. Uh, so this is essential. This is needed. This is the correct response to this kind of experience, that you keep up your sadhana, don't stop your sadhana. Uh, it will go to another level. 
Yes, like he says, now permanently he has this golden light inside and outside. Yeah, and the world looks so much more beautiful. Huh? Everything, well, everything except people. You, <laughs> you can see how people are so false and phony, how they carry so much anger and, and how they have such strong ego boundaries around them. You know, and it's, it's really, it's kind of sad, you know. But hey, you take the good with the bad. And the good is that you can see the beauty of nature completely revealed. And how the mother cherishes and nourishes every living being. Huh? And arranges their lives in such a way as to give them the lessons that slowly, slowly bring them to enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>